in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. I welcome you to this celebration of the Eucharist, the sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time, and I am in an extraordinary church. This is the second oldest church in Melbourne, St. Augustine's Church, right bang in the center of Melbourne City. In fact, there's a lot of commotion, there's a lot of noise going on outside, but God still deserves the glory. On behalf of FRG Ministry, thank you for joining us for this time of prayer. I'm going to offer this Mass for you, for your intentions, especially those of you who have put in your prayers through the prayer request um, website, webpage, and also through social media. We love to pray for you, and we believe in a God of breakthrough, and we know that God is going to work miracles in your life throughout this Holy Eucharist. So as we begin this time of worship in this beautiful place, this place of worship, your place at home, just invite the Holy Spirit into your heart that you may be able to receive everything that God wants to give you during this Mass. Lord, as we approach your throne, you show us mercy. Lord, have mercy. You invite us into the inner courts of your presence. Christ, have mercy. And you give us joy and abundance as we share the salvation with others. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. And let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in the hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The Lord says this, a curse on the man who puts his trust in man, who relies on things of flesh, whose heart turns from the Lord. He is like dry scrub in the wastelands. If good comes, he has no eyes for it. He settles in the parched places of the wilderness, a salt land uninhabited. A blessing on the man who puts his trust in the Lord. With the Lord for his hope, he is like a tree by the waterside that trusts its roots to the stream. When the heat comes, it feels no alarm. Its foliage stays green. It has no worries in the year of drought and never ceases to bear fruit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response for the responsorial psalm is, Happy are they who hope in the Lord. Happy, Happy are, are they, they who, who hope, hope in the, the Lord. Lord. Happy indeed is the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor lingers in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of scorners, but whose delight is the law of the Lord, and who ponders his law day and night. Response. Happy are, are they, they who hope in the Lord. Lord. He is like a tree that is planted beside the flowing waters that yields its fruit in due season and whose leaves shall never fade and all that he does shall prosper. Response. Happy, Happy are, are they, they who, who hope, hope in, the in the Lord. Not so are the wicked, not so. For they, like renowned chaff, shall driven away by the wind. For the Lord guards the way of the just 
but the way of the wicked leads to doom. Response, happy, happy are, are they, they who hope, hope in, the Lord. in the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. If Christ raised from the dead is what has been preached, how can some of you be saying that there is no resurrection of the dead? For if the dead are not raised, Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, you are still in your sins. And what is more serious, all who have died in Christ have perished. If our hope in Christ has been for this life only, we are the most unfortunate of all people. But Christ has in fact been raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. and be glad. Your reward is great in heaven. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus came down with the twelve and stopped at a piece of level ground where there was a large gathering of his disciples and with a great crowd of people from all parts of Judea and from Jerusalem and from the coastal regions of Tyre and Sidon. Then fixing his eyes on his disciples, he said, How happy are you who are poor! Yours is the kingdom of God. Happy are you who are hungry now, you shall be satisfied. Happy you who weep now, you shall laugh. Happy are you when people hate you, drive you out, abuse you, denounce your name as criminal on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice when the day comes and dance for joy, for then your reward will be great in heaven. This was the way their ancestors treated the prophets. But alas for you, you who are rich, you who are having consolation now. Alas for you who have your fill now, you shall go hungry. Alas for you who laugh now, you shall mourn and weep. Alas for you when the world speaks well of you. This was the way their ancestors treated the false prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. It is really hard, always really hard, to be faithful, to keep our eyes focused. One of the Beatitudes, which I love, it says, Blessed are the pure in heart, the pure in spirit, for they shall inherit the kingdom of heaven. Now, purity is about focus. It's about being able to keep our eyes on the prize, not to be distracted by things of this world. Because, believe me, there are so many things that distract us from what God has called us to do. And it is a battle. It is a constant war that we have, a constant tug of war that we have against the things of the world. Just imagine yourself pulling against a rope, and there you are by yourself trying to pull against all the temptations, all the distractions of the world. People's expectation, that's one person pulling. The next person pulling is thoughts and, and temptations. And you're trying to pull against these. And then materialism and, and, and expectations of our own self. And we're pulling and we're pulling and we're trying to live this Christian life, but we're being pulled in the opposite direction. And it is really hard. It is really difficult. And I would say this, it is absolutely impossible to live faithfully today unless we use God to help us pull against the currents of this world. 
You see, this is the problem that we are trying to pull without the power of the Holy Spirit. We're trying to pull without the power of God. We're trying to pull and trying to win this war. And we're saying, God, I'll be okay. I can handle this. Or we're not making the effort, the, the sacrifice of falling to our knees and crying out to a God who will tie this rope around his waist. And he will not only hold us strong, he will not only help us keep away from these temptations, but all he needs to do is to take a little step back with us in his arms, and everything collapses. The temptations, the sinfulness, the addictions, the expectations of others. But be aware of God with you. Don't lose heart. Don't forget what God has promised for you. And why? Because of the cross. Because of what Jesus has done for you on the cross. Without the cross, this is absolutely impossible. But because of the cross, we can fight this battle. Let's ask God for strength. Let's ask God for the, the breakthrough that we need to overcome, especially those of you who feel right now that it is impossible to win this war, who finds it impossible and we're being dragged to the other side to a place of defeat. Well, God has victory for you. God has won the battle for you. Just allow God to fight this battle for you. Stop trying to do it yourself. You cannot. Fall to your knees. Cry out to God. Worship God who alone has the power to save you. I'm so grateful for Jesus in my life. I'm so grateful that no matter how far gone we might feel or seem, God has the power to save us. God has the power to win. When all seems lost, turn to the Lord. He is the God of victory. He will surprise you. Trust in Him. Depend on Him. Rely on Jesus. As a family who need Jesus, who depend on Jesus, let us cry out to Him as we proclaim our faith in Him. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And so now we bring our prayers to the Lord who wants to hear. And I, at this very start, want to pray for those who have asked for prayer those through our prayer request website and the social media, those who have messaged me as well to ask for prayer. Lord, I just place every single person on your altar and I ask you, Lord, to look after their every need. Lord, hear us. We pray for the Pope, for the church, for a church that is struggling in this war, sometimes defeated. Lord, give us the victory as we trust in you, as we fall to our knees and fall in love with you again fall in love with trusting you again. Lord, hear us. And so now in the moment, in this moment of silence with your own family, the people around you, maybe out loud or in the silence of your heart, just bring your prayers to the Lord. So, Lord, we ask you to receive these prayers as we cry out to you through the intercession of Mary, our warrior mama. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. <laughs>
sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. When through the woods and forest glades I wander, and hear the birds sing sweetly in the tree. So pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will a source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Through Christ, his death, we celebrate with love and his resurrection, we confess with living faith. And his coming in glory awaits with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his fashion, he took bread and, giving thanks, he broke it. Then he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with our bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Lord, let Christ bring me to everlasting life. Jesus 
like to pray for you for your intentions I know there are many people here who are desiring for a breakthrough in their lives for a healing in their lives for God to work through their finances and I just like to intercede for you to pray for you as a priest as someone on behalf of the church just to cry out to God for you so just bow your heads and just receive whatever God wants to give you so father God I thank you for your love for your people that you love them in spite of the feeling that they have sometimes that they're not loved. Lord, show them how much they are appreciated, loved, and even liked by you. Lord, I'd like to pray for those who are struggling with depression, those who have bipolar, any mental disorder, Lord. Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus for break, that you break this, this pain that they're going through, this darkness that they're going through. Give them your healing. Lord, I'd like to pray for those struggling with, with joints, uh, joint problems. Lord, thank you that you're healing your people. Lord, I'd like to pray for those who are trying to have children and are unable to do that. Lord, give them this gift of, of, of conceiving this child. Lord, I'd like to pray for those who are going through broken relationships. Father, heal your people, especially those in marriages, Lord. Those who are, uh, feel so hopeless in their relationships. Show them, Lord Jesus, that when they turn to you, that you will give them the power, the strength, even when it all seems lost. You are an awesome God, an amazing, loving Father. And I ask you to bless your people. And so in the silence of our hearts, we'll have it written just here. But let us pray a spirit act of spiritual communion. On behalf of FRG Ministry, thank you for joining us, for praying with us. We're only able to celebrate these Masses with you because of our donors and ministry partners. So please do consider becoming a ministry partner. Um, there's the link just under here. Um, and we'd love to, there's so many things, so many ways we can bless you. One of the things is on the 9th, and we have a, a prayer meeting for our ministry partners and Encounter subscribers. So if you'd like to become a ministry partner or a subscriber to our online courses, which we have some incredible courses and new ones coming out all the time, this subscription uh, it will give you access to all of our courses. We have uh, over nine, nine different courses, different things that you can study, and they are being added to all the time. We have a brand new one coming out next week, and we'll announce that next week. Also, um, we're going to the Holy Land as a pilgrimage, as a... Um, the, we're opening it to the public as of this week, so please check out this link, come with us. It's very limited, as you can imagine, but um, I'll be there with our FRG ministry team. We'll have times of worship, we'll have time to pray, we'll even have live Mass um, from the Holy Land. Uh, just uh, we'd love to have you join us. I know it's a difficult time, it's an unsure time at the moment, but register anyway and ho hopefully this will go through. We will not put anyone at any risk, um, uh, any travel risk. So let us pray.
Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for what fo that food which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. <laughs>